Hello, I'm Aaron, a cloud support engineer here at AWS. Today, I'm going to show you how to identify and resolve Amazon CloudFront 403 access denied errors when you use an Amazon Simple Storage Service S3 REST API origin. Let's get started. How do I identify my S3 bucket origins endpoint type? There are two ways that you can configure an Amazon S3 bucket as a CloudFront origin, either as the bucket's REST API endpoint or the bucket's website endpoint. Follow along with me in the AWS Management Console to confirm your S3 origin type. Open the CloudFront Console. Select the CloudFront distribution whose origin you want to check. Choose the Origins tab. Note the origin domain value for the S3 origin. If the value is similar to example bucket.s3.region.amazonaws.com or example bucket.s3.amazonaws.com, then this indicates that the origin is an S3 bucket's REST API endpoint. If the value is instead similar to example bucket.s3-website-us-east-one.amazonaws.com, then this indicates that the origin is an S3 bucket's website endpoint. If you're experiencing 403 access denied errors with an S3 website origin, visit our repost discussion on the topic to understand the differences between accessing S3 website endpoints and accessing REST API endpoints. What if I'm using an origin access control? When you use an S3 REST API origin within a CloudFront distribution, the distribution must have sufficient access to the bucket's objects. To configure access, you can use either an origin access control, OAC, or an origin access identity, OAI. You can also authenticate requests using AWS Signature v4 or make the objects publicly accessible. For most use cases where a CloudFront distribution must access an S3 REST API origin, it's a best practice to use an OAC. Here's how to create a new OAC in the AWS Management Console. Open the CloudFront Console. Under Security, choose Origin Access. Under the Default Control Settings tab, Choose Create Control Setting. Enter a name for your OAC. Optionally, you can enter a description. Under Settings, make sure that Sign Requests Recommended is selected for the signing behavior. If your OAC is set to Do Not Sign Requests, then CloudFront can't access the S3 bucket, which causes a 403 error. If your client applications can sign requests and your use case involves toggling between client signed and CloudFront signed authorization headers, then you can also select do not override authorization header. For most use cases, you don't need to turn on this feature. I'll keep it unselected. Make sure that your origin type is set to S3. Choose create. Remember that for an OAC configuration, you must always set signing behavior to always sign requests. Otherwise, CloudFront can't sign requests that are made against your S3 REST API origin, and you will receive a 403 access denied error. What if my bucket contains objects that are encrypted with AWS KMS? If your S3 REST API origin has objects that are encrypted with AWS Key Management Service, and you're using an OAI for your distribution, then you must instead use an OAC so that CloudFront can properly sign requests to S3 for encrypted objects. You must also update the KMS key policy to grant the OAC permission to use the key, such as in the following policy from my own key. Let's go to KMS together. Make sure customer managed keys are selected for this scenario, and then select the key in question. Once the key in question is selected, edit its key policy, and ensure that the policy shown on the screen is implemented using your account information. 
you can also use an origin request lambda edge function to serve objects from KMS encrypted S3 REST API origins. More information about how to use this function, including sample code, see our Solutions Architect blog post for more information. To confirm whether your objects are encrypted, you can either check your bucket's properties to see if AWS KMS is selected for encryption, or use the AWS command line interface to run a head object command against an object in your bucket. Let's navigate to S3 to check our bucket. Select the KMS encrypted bucket. Navigate to Properties. Scroll down to its default encryption setting. If the encryption type says server-side encryption with Amazon S3 managed keys, then your bucket is encrypted by default. If you would instead like to verify using the AWS CLI, let's navigate to Cloud Shell. If the output from the following AWS CLI command shows AWS KMS for server-side encryption, then your object is encrypted. As you can see in my output, the server-side encryption output field is set to AWS KMS, showing that my bucket's index.html file was encrypted. How do I confirm my bucket policy when I use an OAC or OAI? When you create and associate an OAC with your CloudFront distribution, the necessary bucket policy is generated for you. If you didn't copy the policy when you created your distribution, or you want to confirm your current policy, then use the example policy shown below. I will also walk with you in creating an OAC distribution. Let's start by navigating to CloudFront. Next, let's click on Create Distribution. Under Origin Domain, select a S3 REST API bucket. Under Origin Access, select Origin Access Control Settings recommended. Under Origin Access Control, select your Origin Access Control. The rest of your distribution settings are at your own discretion. I will go through with some defaults I find helpful for troubleshooting. Once the distribution is created, you will see a pop-up saying that the S3 bucket policy needs to be updated. You may click on Copy Policy, so the policy statement is copied to your clipboard, and then you may click the Go to S3 Bucket Permissions hyperlink. Once here, you may scroll down to the Bucket Policy section, click Edit, and paste the statement that you copied from CloudFront. Once pasted, you may save the policy. When you use an OAI, go to the bucket in the Amazon S3 console and then manually attach the bucket policy. I will show you one of my OAI-enabled buckets. Let's navigate to S3. I will now select my OAI-specific bucket. Under my Buckets Permissions tab will be a policy that you may use with your own account information to configure OAI permissions. This bucket policy is specific to my distribution and AWS account. What if my bucket's objects are owned by a different AWS account? For a bucket policy to apply to external accounts or services, the AWS account that owns the bucket must also own the objects. If your S3 REST API origins objects are owned by another account, then Amazon S3 responds with a 403 error because of an object owner mismatch. For more information on this topic, let's navigate to Cloud Shell. To get your account's S3 canonical ID, run the following AWS CLI command. To confirm the owner of an object in S3, run the following AWS CLI command. Note how in my example, the first command's owner ID matches the second command's owner ID. If the canonical IDs don't match, then the bucket and object have different owners. In this case, complete the following steps to resolve the object owner mismatch. From the object owner's account, 
run the following command to get the access control list permissions that are assigned to the object. If the object has bucket owner full control ACL permissions, then skip this step. If the object doesn't have bucket owner full control ACL permissions, then run the following command from the object owner's account. From the bucket owner's account, run the following command to change the owner of the object by copying the object over itself. If CloudFront still returns a 403 error, then confirm that the requested object existed in S3 at the time of the request. When CloudFront forwards a request to your S3 REST API origin and the object doesn't exist, S3 returns a 403 error. Let's use one of my distributions as an example. This null.txt object does not currently exist in this distribution's bucket, so I will receive a 403 error when attempting to access it. However, if I navigate back to my management console, go to S3, select my bucket where the object doesn't exist, and upload the object in question, I can then resend the request through CloudFront and be presented with the content. If you find a non-existent object, upload it, and still receive a 403 error, then the 403 response might be cached. To reconfirm access, create an invalidation for the object's URI. I will show you how to create an invalidation for this object in the management console. Let's navigate to CloudFront. Select the distribution in question. Click on the Invalidations tab. Click on Create Invalidation. Enter the URI path of the object in question. Finally, click on Create Invalidation. Once this invalidation is complete, CloudFront will clear its cache of this 403 for this object to allow for a fresh origin request to take place. If further 403s are still occurring, then you may rule this root cause out. Because S3 object names are case sensitive, also confirm that the request URIs that you send to CloudFront exactly match the S3 object name. For instance, in my CloudFront tab, if I tried accessing capital N null.txt, I would also receive a 403. What if clients receive 403s when making requests against the root of my distribution? For viewers to access your distribution at its root, you must specify a default root object. Otherwise, S3 returns a 403 error. Let's navigate to my environment in the AWS Web Console. Let's go to CloudFront. Let's select one of the distributions where I do not yet have a default root object specified. For this distribution, I do have an index.html in the corresponding buckets directory. However, when I navigate to it, I will receive a 403. To rectify this issue, let's go back to our distribution and click Edit under Settings. Once within your distribution settings, under Default Root Object, specify the object in S3 of your default root object. Once entered, let's scroll all the way to the bottom and save our changes. Once your last modified time changes from deploying to a timestamp, you will be able to verify the changes you just made to your distribution. Now that my distribution has been updated, now let's attempt to go to the root of it. And we will now see that because a default root object is specified, we will not receive a 403 error. 403 errors suppress a 404 response from S3 because the bucket policy isn't granting S3 list bucket access, which is required for S3 requests that don't specify a specific object. Note that it's not a security best practice to allow S3 list bucket public access. S3 list bucket public access allows users to see and list all objects in a bucket. This exposes object metadata details, such as key and size, to users even if the users don't have permissions to download the object. To better understand what happens during requests in CloudFront 
and your S3 REST API origin when you test or investigate 403 errors, it's a best practice to implement CloudFront standard logs and S3 server access logs. The CloudFront logs provide you with relevant request results such as URI, HTTP verb, HTTP response code, and result type. The S3 logs provide you with the object key, operation, HTTP status, and signature version. If you need additional support to resolve the 403 errors, then you can find request IDs for each service in these logs. When you contact AWS Premium Support, share these request IDs so that we can better help you. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS. <music>